Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. So today I'm gonna to be actually planting some seed on my hygge culture bed. This is a cover crop called Crimson Clover. And I think it's gonna be the best cover crop for right here. So hygge culture beds tend to be robbed of nitrogen in the beginning because of all the wood breaking down tends to pull the nitrogen out of the soil. And clover are nitrogen fixers, which means that they add nitrogen back into the soil. And that's the plan. I hope that'll work. Uh, I did read up on it and this is one of the better ones. So I got this bag. It's about a pound. It's more than I need for this bed. It's a small little bed. I don't need that much, but you buy it by the pound at the local feed shop. So that's what I got. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this tarp off and we're going to get to planting. Pull this up and oh, looks like we've actually got some stuff growing on it already. A lot of grasses. A lot of crickets and bugs everywhere. That's good. So yeah, those grasses are really growing. Oh, we got fire ants. So today might not be the day that I do this because that is a big bed of ants. All right, so what I got here is diatomaceous earth and some coffee grounds that's not near enough. Uh, that's all I got right now. I need to drink some more coffee. Uh, oh, this stuff is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not a problem, but I'm gonna save all the rest next couple days and we're gonna pour some of that in there and I'm gonna actually kind of mix that in a little bit, kind of tick them off. <sighs> Make them angry. And once they all come to the surface here, sprinkle some of that diatomaceous earth on. And that should kill them. Not all of them though, I'm gonna be honest because there's a whole bunch underneath and this might take a couple days of this. So this diatomaceous earth is not a poison. All it does is pierce their exoskeleton, which, which causes them to dry out. And I wonder if I can just spread the seed anyway. It is gonna rain the next couple days, which is good for this clover. They need a lot of water. So I really want, kinda wanted to get them in the ground here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. <laughs> See this one here? There's one here walking around with a whole bunch of white powder on him. It gives me wings! That one ain't gonna make it. So the seed I got, it's coated. So you can see it's kind of white. Um, it's coated with this stuff to help kind of keep moisture on because they need a lot. And I don't really know how much I need to put on, but go ahead and start seeding this. Hopefully those ants die. I might have to do another another thing with the diatomaceous earth. And I'll definitely be putting more coffee grounds all over this. They just, they don't like coffee grounds. Someone said it in the comment section, one of you guys had said that it disrupts their pheromones and ability to kind of talk to each other or something, so, and they want to just move, I guess. I'll just put it right on top of the ant hills here. I don't think the diatomaceous earth is going to hurt the seeds. Just bugs. Now, one thing with diatomaceous earth, I probably way overseeded this, guys. I don't know. Um, but one thing with diatomaceous earth is that you don't want to use it when you've got a chance of pollinators. So this is fine because the crimson clover hasn't, hasn't come up yet. But once these do start flowering, I don't want to put any diatomaceous earth here because I don't want to kill the bees because it will. It'll, it'll knock out all the pollinators, which I don't want to do because I, I want them for my garden. I want them to, hard to see where I sprinkled this already on this side. All that. But I, I need the pollinators for my, my vegetables that I'm growing, so. All right, so I got more 
clover and we'll see where I use that. I might end up putting it on one of these if they're not ready yet. Uh, these rows might, we'll see. Um, if they're not ready, I'll use it as a cover crop this spring. And this is a little early to be putting it on, but you know, I wanted to try to get this bed ready a little sooner. Uh, I believe that it will be. I believe that this is gonna break down a lot sooner than normal. They say it takes up to six months before it's ready. I think this is gonna be ready in three and then I can grow some vegetables here, maybe even this coming spring. So that's, that's my hope. So probably by May, I'll be able to start planting here. The wood I put in wasn't super thick. I didn't really have big pieces. And I also put in some already decayed wood. So I think that this is gonna end up being ready pretty soon, especially with this crimson clover as a cover crop. Once I decide to kind of take those out, I don't want them turning to seed necessarily. I'll let the flowers sprout and then I'm going to probably turn it back in. I don't know how to do that on a on a bed like this, but um, that's the plan or at least take them out uh, before they seed because I don't necessarily want them seeding here. Maybe I do. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section what you do with a cover crop on a hugu culture bed. It's the first time I've done done a hugu culture. So give it a couple months. Once those grow, then I can, hopefully I can plant something because they are nitrogen fixers. So and by the way, today is February 15th, just so we can keep track of how long this takes for these clovers to pop up. Update on the ant hill here. Um, I've been coming through, by the way, and watering. And, you know, it kind of took care of it for a little bit. They're coming back again. So I'm going to do some more diatomaceous earth here. Um, I've been dumping coffee grounds every day yeah watch out hun i'm doing this while it's dry because this stuff has to be dry to work mm -hmm. and then i will water it after you know tonight i'll water it again so that way the seeds that i planted will take off and then i add coffee grounds as well pretty regularly this is now four days in we still got these ants so i'm just kind of going back and forth i forgot to i meant this weekend to go to starbucks to get a whole bunch of coffee grounds and just kind of dump that on top and i think that would have taken care of it but i forgot to do it so um i'm only dumping what i drink in coffee which is not a ton i do drink you know a fair amount but it's just not enough to really take care of this giant ant pile so well there's the update guys i'll bring you guys back once these seeds sprout as well i'm seeing the starts of some seedlings coming out of these seeds so We'll have some clover growing pretty soon here. It's been sitting on there for a while. Let's see if those ants come out. They are, they're still coming out. So I ended up getting something a little stronger too. It's like a bacterial thing. It starts with an S, forgot what it's called, but I put that on too. It's supposed to kill them in 24 hours, but such a massive mound. I wonder if it just won't be able to. So I got to water it because those seeds are starting to sprout want to make sure that those don't dry out, but this might be the last time I need to water. Once those roots go deep enough, um, the wood underneath is holding a lot of moisture. So just the seeds on top need to not dry out. And it is warm today, so I've got to water and then we'll figure out that ant issue another day by trying to put more stuff on there. Now I will say this has settled quite a bit. I mean, I am heavily watering it quite often since I put those seeds in. And I mean, every time I plant, I think I'll have to, honestly. Let's see how these ants look. I mean, they're there, but they're not as much. I mean, they were just piling out last time I watered or anything, you know, touched it, whatever. So there's far less. So I wonder if that poison stuff really did work. Now it says it can take up to 24 hours and I put it on maybe 19 hours ago. So I just really wanted to starting to get warm. I wanted to make sure that these seedlings don't have an issue and I can always reapply. I'm guessing I'm slightly allergic to, to ants as well to fire ants. So when they bite me, um, like if I get like more than two or three on my hand, <clears throat> then my joints swell up and, uh, you know, I can barely even bend my wrist happens on my ankles and I'm kind of crippled for a couple days, which is rough living out here, but I get by, I mean, it's okay. Uh, but I did put that on there. We'll see if that takes care of them. So I don't want to be in here digging around and then just have them completely cover me. It, I don't know what would happen if I got hundreds of stings from them. I've never had that happen. <laughs> So 
I got to take care of it. So anyway, sprinkle that stuff. Senocides, I think it's what it's called. I, I could be wrong. I don't know exactly, but we'll see if that fully takes care of it. They definitely look less right now. So all right, guys, so an update on this. All of these have sprouted. Well, maybe not all, but a lot. I am still seeing some seeds that haven't, but a good portion have. It is a hot day today, though, so I want to make sure that these have enough water. Um, I haven't fully taken care of those ants. No matter what I put on it, they stay. I don't know what it is. I cannot get rid of them. So, since these are small seedlings, I mean, their roots aren't deep. They're not getting down to where the wood is to be able to soak up the moisture there. we will get them hosed down. This might be the last time we have to, but it is just so hot and it hasn't rained for a couple days, so the ground is really dry. So I just got these two. I went to Starbucks and they gave me coffee grounds. This is probably 10 pounds of coffee grounds. It's quite a bit. Um, I need more, but I think that's what I'm going to do because there are ants all through this. So if I just make this a difficult area, they don't like the coffee grounds. I'll just pour this all over and it's going to cover some of the plants, some of the little babies, but they'll come right back up through it. Uh, and especially here where that big anthill was, we'll, we'll just really cover that spot. Cool, now I'm gonna water this in. I've got the cover crop on there. And then I also planted a couple mustards along the way up here, which mustard is in the brassica family. Uh, mustard does like high nitrogen, so it might not do well, but I had the extra seedlings and I just wanted to kind of put that up there. And also mustard is kind of a fumigator kind of in a way from what I read. Only thing is it's starting to die back. I forgot to water it after I planted it and it's a hot day today. So I did it this morning. We'll see if it makes it, but anyway, mustard growing in a spot will fumigate it and kind of kill a lot of the pests or at least drive them away. They don't like it. Um, from what I read, something to that extent. Um, also helps deter a lot of weeds. So hoping that'll help too. So we'll do like a double cover crop here really heavily water this it is so hot today it's crazy for a uh, middle of february to be so ridiculously hot you know i'm not really seeing any ants pop out and usually they'd just be pouring out of there when i would water it so maybe maybe they're already taken care of i do know some of that stuff i put on there kills them and it says within 24 hours that was more than 24 hours ago all right well i definitely am going to be getting more of that coffee grounds whether or not it's for this bed or another i can actually put the coffee grounds in other beds over the next little bit maybe even till it in in some of these once i kind of till these up and get these prepared for corn and stuff but these haven't really started the daikons aren't quite ready they haven't sent their shoots down they're not making big big roots so this is almost ready oh look guys we've got wheat that's wheat right there so wheat is starting i'm gonna be able to harvest that pretty soon let's see what about the barley barley's not there i'm not seeing any of it yet oh yep i am look at that there's the barley coming up we're close guys we're close i'm gonna be able to get this now i think you gotta let it dry on there but pretty excited about that. That's that's exciting. You know, it's exciting. So maybe this bed will be ready pretty soon. Once I harvest all this, then I can plant corn. That'll be the next thing I grow. Uh, I'll probably have to amend the soil a little bit, get some nitrogen in there. That's really exciting. 